All right, then, if you have your Bibles, we ask you to turn to Genesis 18. Mm -hmm. Genesis 18, and we're going to begin reading in verse 17. Genesis chapter 18, and we're going to begin reading in verse uh, 17. The Bible says, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham have, shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations on the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, and he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, and do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Behold, uh, and the Lord said, Because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is, very, it is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? And be it far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, and be, as, and be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken it upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes, peradventure shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find forty, if there are forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I shall not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto them, Oh, let, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak, peradventure, there shall be thirty be found. And, and he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, peradventure, there shall be twenty found that, there. And he said, I will not destroy it if, uh, if for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak yet once this again. Peradventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for all the goodness that you've shown our church. We pray uh, this evening, Lord, that you would meet with us. We pray for Jarrett and Heather uh, that you might give them oneness of mind on this decision and that the decision would be made in your will and not in the will of the flesh. Uh, God, help the churches that are looking for pastors and we know that our things could always be worse. Uh, Lord, we pray for our missionaries tonight. We lift them up to you and that you would grant them encouragement where they serve. We'd be faithful to give you the praise for it, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Now, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, the first part of this chapter is probably more familiar uh, when uh, the Lord God comes down in all three persons and gives Abraham uh, the, the plan for the next year, and in that plan, the fulfillment of the promised son. 
And he gives that, and as they were exiting, and you know the story, uh, Sarah and Abraham fixed the Godhead and meal. They have a time of communion there together. And then as they're getting up to go on their way, God speaks yet again. And you, you will go through there, but you saw what the foretelling of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, uh, what Abraham did might seem pres presumptuous, but what it was really was intercessory prayer. And he had the courage and the boldness to go before the Godhead and say, I know this is a wicked city, but would you consider sparing it? You know, we live in such a day, our government is in such a mess, and things are so crazy right now, that half the time God's people go down, uh, go around angry when we should be the ones in intercessory prayer. Yeah. Now, I'll say nine-tenths of the time, our prayers are not intercessory. Right. I would say nine-tenths of the time, our prayers are more self-fulfilling and self-based. And even if we pray for others, it's often our family. Uh, we, don't, we don't pray for people outside our circle of knowledge. Uh, you know, I think about how many people have come into and out those doors over the past 20 years. And I wonder how many have remained in our minds since intercessory prayer. Uh, I remember years ago, and you may or may not remember, we hadn't been in the new building very long, and this woman came in and sat, I guess, around back where, uh, behind Sister Diane, and I greeted her at the door, and she came in and sat down, and she said, I don't even know why I'm here, it's just the Lord told me to come here, middle-aged lady, and never saw her again. And often she comes to my mind, and I'll say a brief prayer for her. And uh, haven't thought about it, she, you know, Again and again, we need to be the intercessor and be likened to Christ. You know, we always want to say we want to be more like Christ. Well, Christ was an intercessor for his people, and that's what we need to do. We need to approach the, uh, the Godhead with intercessory prayer. And there is never a, there's never a limit to the number of people that we can pray for. Uh, back in verse 17, and the Lord said... Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now, first of all, I want you to see that we're not, even as sovereign grace Baptists, we're not all knowing. God doesn't have to run things by you to make sure it's okay and that it fits into your plan too. Right. Uh, he said, should I do it? He didn't have to do it. He chose to do it, and he wouldn't end up uh, sharing the destruction of Sodom uh, with his plan to do so with Abraham, but he didn't have to. So have you ever thought if he does that, he's anticipating intercessory prayer from you? If he, uh, you know, we live in a day and age today with medical science, we can know how sick we are very quickly. <laughs> have you ever thought that, that the benefit of that is just for intercessory prayer? To see what your prayer life is made out of, uh, see how faithful you are to that. You know, I've known people literally the entirety of their life and die in the faith still praying for lost children. That's intercessory prayer. Yeah. But we always want to see the culmination of it, do we not? We, we want to see it happen. Yeah. Um, in some sense, we want it to go our way. Uh, that's not effective prayer. Effective prayer is understanding that the ultimate will of God will be accomplished, but we do go before Him. So we don't have to know. That's the first thing. Uh, verse 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now, I want you to see... One of the reasons that the Lord God thought it good to tell Abraham is because he knew Israel would be carrying, literally carrying the ark or carrying the person of God for some 4,000 years, 2,000 years, and understand who he was and anticipation of the Lord Jesus Christ coming out of that. And he said in lieu of that, he needs to know what had happened to Sodom and he needs to know why. That, that was the goal of it. When, 
Uh, when all the histories of the Bible, and I talked to a Campbellite man uh, several weeks ago, and, and they think all they need is Psalms, Proverbs, and the New Testament. And you know why? Because the Old Testament barely screams a sufficient sacrifice. It, it has to be. And so we find that without the Old Testament, we wouldn't see the importance of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we wouldn't see that, that God even then wanted to know that his power would be known. Verse 19, for I know him and he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord. Now, he says he's going to be a, a, a father of a great nation. And on top of that, I have confidence that Abraham would share it with his children. When, when you've had an effective prayer, did you to share it with your children? When God provided seemingly out of nothing, did you say, look, children, this is how it happened. This, this, this is why it happened. You know how you... Uh, teach your children the power of prayer, you let them know whenever God does it. Uh, and, and so we find that the Lord God said, well, if we, if we share it with Him, we certainly know He's going to share it with everybody else. And then notice what? That He shall keep the way of the Lord. Now, I think it's very interesting wording, the way of the Lord. You know, the Lord God has a way in every situation that exists. Um, and his way was going to be to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and leave it as nothing. But I want you to see, despite that, Abraham was still an intercessor. You know what? Uh, we, I fully believe the warning in, in, in the book of the Revelation that this place one day will melt away is just as sure as the destruction that came upon Sodom and Gomorrah, but it don't keep me from praying for people. It don't keep me from praying for my lost children. It don't keep me from praying for the nation that we now sit in. You, have, you must be faithful to prayer. And even though what, what was going to happen, Abraham, despite understanding and knowing that, still went before God. Now, that is very, very easy. The example I used, when it's your children. But what about it when it's someone you don't even really know? Uh, the years that we supported the crafts ministry in southern Mexico, I trust that you pr that you prayed for him and you prayed for those Mexican believers down there and you prayed that the Lord would protect them and encourage them in the word of God. I trust that you did that, but you had a personal connection, right? You love the crafts dearly, and I, and I do too. But think about Joe Biden. Have you prayed for him today? I mean, intercessory prayer. And I'll be the first to say I have it. Uh, but why is he outside the hand, the hand reach of God? I certainly don't believe he is. Do you? No. Uh, I, I think that if it's his will, <laughs> President Biden would be saved. And not only be saved, but could be a testimony of him. And, and so we find sometimes we limit our prayer life to what we think is right. And so uh, I think Abraham did some quick figuring in his head. And he started out with 50. Now, I don't know, uh, I've heard a lot of theories on how many people were, they were kind of like sister cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. If you've ever been up to Minnesota, uh, where they, you know, uh, me and Donna had a layover there one time, the Great Lakes, and there's two cities, and they look like one big one, but they're two separate cities. And uh, when we were there, uh, you can see both of them. And that's kind of how this, this was. And... Some said there was as many as a million people in both those cities. And so he did some quick figuring. And you know what? I don't think he was thinking about anything else but Lot and his family. Now, I may be wrong about that, but 
When Lot went to the world, the well watered plains, and left Abraham behind, he saw some people go with him. Now we know that there were uh, at least sons and daughters, and uh, we don't know how many that was, but it's plural on both ends, so that means there was at least four children plus the two daughters at home. Sons means at least two, daughters means at least two, and then they had the two younger girls that were still living at home. So maybe with children and grandchildren, maybe he was just thinking, Ten. Now, children, you know, those of you that are still here, that would be me and Donna and Bella and Joey and Sarah and Adam's four. That's nine. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, surely, look around the building. Lord, would you save it for 12? There's 12 of us in here this morning, right? And I believe that's what he was thinking. And he prayed and said, Lord, I don't want to interrupt your plan, but 50. And, and then, no doubt, understanding the Godhead probably much, much better than we do, he said 45. And you, you know, he worked it all the way down to 10. And the Lord God, even then, said, I won't do it for 10. But you know, there was only in all those huge double cities, there was one saved person in the whole pile, and that was Lot. Mrs. Lot was a lost woman. Those girls were hellions, and they were lost. And in a million people, one saved person walked out alive. And so we find then, <laughs> stories like that can make you go, what's the point? Why am I praying anyway? Well, you know what? It was, Lot did come out, you know, the Bible calls him just Lot. He was a just man. Just in what? In lieu of the law. Anytime you see that word just, it means justice, and it's, lieu, it's in lieu of the law of God. He was a righteous man, and he came out of that field. And you know what? It, <laughs> that's where we need to be. If it's just for one individual, pray your heart out. Now, go before them, Every time you think of that person and pray and pray and pray. And you know what? Sometimes it will get difficult. When, when, when you're trying to pray for somebody that you know within yourself just looking at them, they're God haters. That's a very difficult uh, person to pray for, is it not? I guess the Lord don't want me to say uh, the Speaker of the House. What is her name? Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. Y'all want to curl up and pray for her before you go to bed tonight? Sock drunk, right? God hate her from the inside out. You know what? It should be God's people, even someone like that, to say, God, yeah. in your goodness, would you speak life to her? And you know what? You know what should make us move with fear and I believe certainly this is what Abraham did. When God said, I'm going to rain down fire and it's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he believed it. And you know what? I believe anybody dying outside the realm of grace tonight, they are going to fire, fall alive into the burning pits of hell. And would I not pray on their behalf? Even Nancy Pelosi. Right? But it's a little easy to preach and hard to do, Right? And it's easy to preach it and harder to do. And, and so we find uh, this, this man of God, his method or his manner of prayer, always acknowledging God is first and that he is weak. And But if it be your will, if it be your will, if, if, if there's even 10 down there. And... Our prayer should always be that way. And you know what? Abraham didn't know that Lot was the only one down there. Apparently, Lot's wife and at least some of his sons and daughters, Lot, Abraham had a little bit of confidence in them. I think he was surprised. Lot went down there and said, listen, this place is going up in flames. 
And what, is it, what did the Bible say? And they mocked him. Right? And they didn't leave, did they? Moses didn't know, excuse me, uh, Abraham did not know how that was going to fall out. But he prayed anyway. You know the hardest thing you will ever do is to pray for something you don't think will happen. Kind of difficult to do, isn't it? It's really difficult to do, but you know what? I believe by the word of God, we are always to bring them before uh, God. I think it was David that said, who knows what the Lord might do? It was with the death of the son, the first son by Bathsheba, right? He said he didn't eat or drink for seven days, but went down before the Lord and prayed. And then the child died. And you know the beauty of that, that intercessory prayer? As soon as he died, he washed up, cleaned himself up, and went down to the house of God and praised. Praised the Lord for what he'd done. Now that, that is understanding prayer a lot better than I do. But we certainly should always do that. Praise, pray, pray, pray. And we find that Lot does this in an intercessory way by praying for others. Now I want you to go with me to 1 Timothy. We're going to just read one verse there. And that'll put each of us to shame and we go back to the house. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 in the very first verse. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, I exhort therefore. Now exhort means to very loudly uh, encourage. I exhort you. This is best for you. This is the best decision you can make. This is the best management of your time. This is the very nicest thing that you can do. I exhort you. I command you. I encourage you to do this. I, I want you to do what I am fixing to tell you. I exhort you. Uh, wonderful thing. You don't get a lot of that from the pulpit anymore. I exhort you, therefore, that first of all supplications. Now, we've been preaching on that a number of years, and I would say Baptist almost do, does none of this. You think about at a service time, and especially our nation in that city is, you go to a meeting, and that's the first thing that's mentioned in prayer. Maybe the, the pastor, and, and rightly so, mentions the sick in that flock and uh, mentions them in prayer and go before them. And maybe a church without a pastor, something like that, and all that's good. But how many times do you heard a prayer service begin with supplication? And that is like... Thanks be to God. You're still on the throne. Uh, Russia may be wreaking havoc on the Ukraine, but God is on the throne. He doeth all well. He comes into my home in and, and the coolness of the night and speaks great peace to my heart. He's still on the throne. Everything's going to be fine because my God liveth. How many times do you hear that? But I want you to see that was to be prior to prayer. You know what? There is no need to go to God if you don't understand how wonderful He is. If you don't understand that He has knowledge of the situation. If you don't understand that He can get, uh, that, that He's an authority on all. The other day I heard Miranda and Sarah talking, and I was standing in there, and uh, she said, uh, well, your dad was a wonderful teacher. And I was like, yes, I was. Uh, but uh, do you think they would have listened to me if they didn't know that I was a nurse myself? Do you think they would have listened to me if nothing I said coincided with our books? Do you think that they would have listened to me if I introduced myself on the first day of class and said, uh, my name is Larry Lafferty, I usually teach auto mechanics, but to, this year I'm going to be teaching nursing. My, 
My, my expertise is really in cars, but they were short over here, so I'm going to teach you how to be a nurse. See, our God is supreme in knowledge in all things. He is the expert. And, you know, if you acknowledge that from the beginning, just like all those psalms that, that Adam has been teaching about David, by the end of it, he's in great encouragement because he, he, he remembers God is over all. And if we acknowledge that first, when we get to the, I need this and I need that, it'll kind of fade in the limelight, won't it? Because of how big and wonderful the God that you serve really is. And so, as Paul is writing to young Timothy, he says, I demand, I encourage you, that first of all, supplications, praise, glory, and honor, prayers, Lord, you know, he gave us the 20... He, he gave us the model prayer, as it's called. And then he says the third portion of prayer is this. Intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer. How frequently do we do that? We praise him. We present things before him. And then we begin to intercede in prayer. That's exactly what uh, Abraham... Excuse me. That... Uh, Abraham was doing on behalf of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah was intercessory prayer. Not what he wanted, that, but that he might stand to defend the people. And notice what had happened. They were judged already. And God and Abraham interceded on their behalf. How much intercessory prayer do you do on a routine basis? I think... I think every one of us could do more, don't you think? Think about all the mess the politics is in right now. Won't you pick one individual and go before the Lord in intercessory prayer? Think about the mess your families are in. Pick one individual and go before them in <laughs> intercessory prayer. Think about this, this church, this church group, about all of us are here tonight. Think about how the last five years, I mean, it's been cut low, right? Intercessory prayer for somebody. And listen, if, you, if nobody else pops into your head, pray for me in an intercessory prayer. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um, I think if we do that, we're going to see, we're going to see a lot of a lot of differences. Now, I want you to see that despite all this, did it change the mind of God? No. But I do believe it was pleased with it. I do that. And, and if you notice what it says at the end of the chapter we read, Lot went back to his tent. Uh, excuse me, Abraham went back to his tent. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he sat down there. <laughs> He'd done all he could do, and he knew it. <laughs> That's a restful sleep, is it not? Mm -hmm. So I think we, if we would uh, pray more as intercessors, that sleep would be better because we could, <laughs> we could uh, go to sleep, we could relax knowing we had done everything within our hands that we possibly could do. So he says, intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men. Now, as I was, I was studying this, I thought about the giving of thanks. And Bryce Carden was saved recently. And about as long as I can remember back, I know at least since Brother Christopher and Brandy were members of this church, they came back from Ohio. Even back then, there were people praying for his salvation in this church. When they moved to Hopkinsville, we were still praying. You know how long ago that was? That was over 20 years ago. Bryce is 21, 22, something like that. That's a long time, man. 20 years ago, I was only 33. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So don't be discouraged. You know, you know what, you, you, you know what never bothers God? Time. <laughs> Time is our invention. 
And so don't, don't get stressed about it. Remain, <laughs> remain true to pray. How thankful are you for what God's given you even tonight? Almost as tired, midweek services, never cartwheel service, right? But what do you, uh, what have you got tonight to thank God for? Well, I didn't have to walk from Chibai Port up here. I had a dependable car. Donna can drive all right. Made it here safely. That's a lot to be thankful for, isn't it? If I had, I had to walk back to the tobacco port, I believe I'd know a little bit more about what thank, being thankful was all about, don't you? Yeah, I mm -hmm. And so I believe if we would just begin to enumerate how good God has been to us, Amen. the supplication would not be an issue anymore. We'd be glad to praise Him. Be glad to lift him up. Be, be glad to identify. Supplication is this. Identifying the one you're praying to before you ever get started. And certainly that's what we should do. Identify him and identify his endless power. And everything else will fall into place.